2024. Yesterday. Well, you know, on those tapes, I went over how even Oatman Family Physicians in 2002 deemed all the doctors lying before medical malpractice. Uh, Dr. Eli occurred and agreed and then got me off all the medicine that was medicine making me sick and here all my family physicians said they were known for lying knowing for making people sick ripping off their insurance it's called overcare there's a name for it medical malpractice if you got really good insurance doctors that are crooked will lie falsely diagnose you get kickbacks from the drug company share with their associates and want to do unnecessary procedures they were actually talking about on the news a few months ago they said people with little to no health insurance are actually healthier that uh, they're doing over the doctors are doing overcare and they said well what is that they said they'll falsely diagnose them write out big prescriptions get drug kickbacks from the drug companies people get really sick they share them with their associates and do unnecessary procedures where if you have no insurance or little insurance you just get the basic treatment and people with really good insurance are becoming very ill or worse they die they're using people that are crooked are using their insurance they're still doing it they put a name on it it's called overcare okay well I've been doing the statements of you know how I went through the surgeries was all in so much pain because my muscles locked up from all the different places they had to cut on my front my back in two and a half years and then the muscles locked on the tenants from being damaged well, I went to the wrong doctors. They falsely diagnosed me, made me swell from my feet to up in my brain. My heart valves enlarged, many heart attacks, my thyroid, adrenal gland shut down. I gained 150 to 175 pounds in a year. <clears throat> and they don't pull me off the medicine. They're lying so bad. They say I have brain tumors. I need my pituitary gland removed. I go to my regular doctor. She's like, whoa, we need to have a long talk what those doctors are doing. They're known for lying. And they're known for falsely diagnosing people. And then they give you these big prescriptions to get 200 to to $1,000 kickbacks from the drug companies per false prescription. Make you sick so you have to come back, share you with your, their associates and their friends. And now they're wanting to do unnecessary procedures. They're known for lying. They're known for making people sick. Turn them into the state so they pull their license. And then uh, get an attorney and sue them. And you get off the medicine, you'll be fine. It's a medication making you sick. They're doing this on purpose, and they're known for doing it. Dr. Lee, uh, Eli agreed, and he said, you know, those muscles are locked tight from being cut so many times. And from all those surgeries, he said, we're going to have to get you out of enough pain where they're locked tight as you move them. And you have to be able to move to get blood flow pushed into them. As blood flow gets pushed into them, they'll relax. And as they relax, the blood flow will get into them, then we can build new muscle tissue. Everything is caused by the medication. There's nothing wrong with you, but your muscle locked up. A perfectly healthy human being walked into those doctor's office. The only thing that happened is I'd had six to ten surgeries, and all those muscles and tendons tightened up and went relaxed. I needed pain medicine and muscle relaxers, maybe some anti inflammatories. That's it. Everything they did out of greed and ripping me off. Okay, it's documented medical malpractice and documented medication errors. Okay, proven in 2002 to 2003 when I got off the medication and I instantly started getting well. Within two months, my uh, first month, I lost 30 pounds. Uh, the second month, I'm pulling myself around stores and malls and I'm in so much pain, even on fentanyl patches. It's 100 times stronger morphine I end up in the hospital. Dr. Eulalie's like, she's got to move, get her out of pain. Okay, so by the end of the second month, beginning of the third month, brain swelling's gone, the heart's back in rhythm. It still flutters at times because they enlarge the heart valves. They damaged my heart. And they still didn't pull me off. Like some of the officers that worked the case, there's no way that those doctors did not know they weren't killing her. And it took another doctor to tell on them. Okay. By the end of the second month, beginning of the third, the brain swelling's gone, the heart's back in rhythm, the thyroid and adrenal glands working, it was all chemically shut down. And I'm losing, I got like three arms because I was so heavy. Okay.
Um, I went from a 24 in 2000, size 24 in 2002 by April on my 16. Pulling myself up and down streets, muscles. The only thing that was wrong with me is my muscles were locked up. All that swelling, I had to learn to walk on numb feet. Um, by April, I'm almost well. Dr. Eloy's actually getting mad at me because he thought I should get well faster, but I had all that swelling. May 3rd, 2003 is when Brian showed up that there was a church baseball game, my whole family's home, and that Phil was the lead car and a bunch of them were late and he ran a stop sign into us and killed him and Tyler both. Nobody could believe that he didn't even try to stop. He was showing off and killed him and his grandson in front of people. Okay, come July, I fi finished getting well. Now, everybody at church has been like, you're going to beat this on your own. Look at you, Karen. Well, they talk about remission. It can't happen fast enough. Oh, you'll beat it on your own. Come July, I finally get well. Okay. Come November of 2003, six months after a traffic accident I had nothing to do with. Okay. Four months after I got well. My sister, Linda, was married, is married to strangest kid, Tim. He and uh, she had seen him out with Katie. Well, she started following him around. Well, she came up to me at church. I was following him again. I got caught. I think they thought it was you. I'm sorry. Be careful. Well, strange made up that lie, discredited me. Oh, you were faking through the last four years. Got rid of me real quick. He came and prayed for me at the hospital for the surgeries. Everybody watched me swell up. Knew I was ending up in cardiac wards. And all those bad things happening to me and walking on braces. And then slowly over nine months get well in front of all of them. And we already told them all it was a medication. Including strange. It was a baby stupid lie a minister made up. In 2003 to cover up his son's adultery. Now, do I think it's funny? No. Do I think it's funny the fucked up Vegas? That her father kills her kid? In a, a showing off? She had nothing to do with the 6 to 10 surgeries over 2 and a half years. She had nothing to do with those crackpots falsely diagnosing me and known to be crooks. And almost killing me, ripping me off in the nine months of slowly getting well, working my ass off to get well. And then strange making up a baby lie and they want sympathy for it. it has nothing to do with them. Like they said, they made up a reason to kill her. So that agent on a recorded line act like a crazy a call person like he's going along with Strange's lie. Yesterday, out in North Canton, some lady said, Karen's will's been listening to some doctor that almost killed her before. And it was deemed medical malpractice by another doctor. All my family physicians. And then Dr. Eli from another hospital. And then proven when I got well, when I got off the medication. It's documented medical malpractice. Documented medication errors. 2002, they were all lying. So their scenario is some crazed doctor is known for lying. Making people sick and almost killed a victim. With their medical malpractice. It is so crazed now. Is selling people's information and sharing them without signed consent. Breaking HIPAA violations. And lying to rip off a victim that he almost killed. See, Altman Hospital is denouncing him. December 30th, 23, I'm in Altman Emergency Room with a client. Some of the nurses are out there. My God. Nobody is to ever back those, uh, talk to those people. They had some guy impersonate a doctor from Altman Hospital selling people's information. The hospital gets sued. The state will go Nazi on them. HIPAA violations. They can't talk to anybody without signed consent. Okay? And no one's to ever back those doctors from before. They were all lying, ripping off her insurance. And they were lying so bad, my God, they said she had brain tumors and she didn't even have that. And we never back anybody purposely making somebody sick, ripping off their insurance with medication errors. No one's to ever back that. Altman Hospital already denounced that they would never back anything they said. Because they all knew they were almost killed me. And the hospital gets sued. And two of the cops walked by. All those doctors were lying. 
Before he said, yeah, it was a medicine making her sick. Now this is funny. The police already documented it was medication errors and those doctors were li all lying, ripping off my insurance. Officer Mark Tall, white guy with white hair over my case since 18, August 22nd of 23rd, uh, of 23, sorry, was outside Coles. He said, none of this is funny. She said, did her ex-husband defend her? He said, yes. Uh, we taped him. So did I. He said, um, did anybody speak to her? He said, no. Then they had to frame her. He said, it's been documented and verified. She was framed before. Was it the drug cartel? He said, yes, we've seen them. He said, it also was documented and verified. It was a medication error that made her sick before. And document and verified another woman was even using her insurance. She's like, none of this is funny. He said, I know it's not. The sheriffs have already documented this too. So what the hell are you talking about? A big drug scam? You know, a, over about a month ago on a Sunday, I was out on the strip in Walmart. Okay. This guy where they hacked the case and sold it the first month. M13 is hacking protective custody cases and live streaming them. Okay? It's on Google. Yeah. All right. Uh, some guy walks in. I listened to the recorded line. That agent did admit to telling on her before, and he did talk to her like that. They better take care of this. I listened to it. Oh, all kinds of people, including police in uniform, have admitted to listening to the recorded line. Okay? I get my client away from him. I go in the grocery aisle. An officer in uniform. Karen, I've been listening to this today. We all know it was a cartel in your home before. Nobody drugs anybody but them. And we all know that guy told on you before. And I want to know how that guy said he heard it. They're trying to figure out how they were hacked. I get my client and we get to another part of the grocery store owned by the ladies clothing aisle. Where the Stark County Sheriff's made fun of that Kurt for falling for their, uh, this crap in 21 called him slow okay he's off in the distance some guys off in the distance talk to him Kurt none of this is funny they have already taped these people saying they made everything up on her before oh I'm mocking everybody and mocking FBI agent John including House Tabernacle doing it June 7th 23 how they fooled him publicly mocked him in Walmart 62 the sheriffs have that one too and then Eric confessing November 18th, 22, that everything was him and not me done for a stunt for people to turn on me. Ha, 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 ha. To the drugs and told to say it, to photoshopping all their lies, erasing some guy named Chris out of the room. And how they frame me and laughing in my face. And where you had those bruises and you were sick, it was us drugging you up and telling you to say it. And how they frame me, the cartel. Running a big scam here. Okay. He uh, said, Kurt, now this is funny. They already taped all these people that they made everything up. Okay. He said, and uh, they have that agent taped uh, on a recorded line that he told on her before. And they also have him taped that he was in it with Dave and stole her money. Everybody's a stay out of this. None of this is funny. Well, we go to check out and the icing on the cake. Pam Strange, Savannah's mom. With her granddaughter, Uncle Dave said he had her tape before i know they'll verify him blah 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 my kids will never verify him they go to jail and the police would have to arrest him i get my client outside and the people working the case are busted not laughing her family was already linked to the follower of randy and now she wants to say she was in it with dave with the stocking tapes took her long enough to confess and her kids better not her back anything on those stocking tapes huh they better, uh, the police better arrest him. Because they've already got all these people taped that they framed her. And they're laughing. Other ones, she actually confessed. Just like March 20th, 24, where that guy I was dating. And this is how sick all of them are. Mentally sick. I'm dating this guy, and he's like too good to be true. He's asleep, and he, he starts talking in his sleep. Judge Pete, I'll love her for you. I'll make love to her for you. I know you can never be around her. Because I'll find out who you actually are. I went, what did you say? And he started rubbing his eyes. Never mind. Well, I come down March 20th, 24. I'm in uh, Walmart 62 in the underwear aisle. They're laughing at him. 
What do you mean that guy said he'd make love to her for Pete? They made up Pete. They made up everything on her to get away with this. Even Pete. What do you mean he'd make love to her for Pete? And they're laughing at him. They made him up. They made everything up on her to get away with it. And they're mocking him. Well, it takes me a few days and I finally say something to him. How they made fun of people for, I didn't say anything what I was talking about in his sleep. How they made up Pete. They made up everything. I mean, he looked like he's going to vomit. Well, he changed. He didn't want to touch me. He didn't. He started yelling at me at times. And then he was only good to me when I gave him money or bought him things. Until I finally laughed. He wanted nothing to do with me and act like I was so repulsive. No one deserves that. Do you realize how sick they are? Now, either he's so mentally ill, he was idolizing a serial rapist and then wanted to participate in that on his own level. Or he idolized him as a movie star because they've sold the login and did something horrible by acting like he loved somebody and actually cared for him. And when he found out they were, it was a big scam, it made him sick. Regardless, it's still sick what he did. That's how sick all these people are. These people are getting a real high off of harassing me. They're getting a real high that they were drugging me up and I had bruises all over me, throwing up, heart racing, migraine, headache, almost passing out in a severe personal infection. Never seen anybody or talked to anybody before the FBI. And that's where, do you realize how mentally sick that is to do that to a human being? They were human trafficking me, having me beat and raped in my own home and drugged up and told to say stuff. Stalking me and my family, photoshopping, washing in a sex extortion act. They sold me on porn sites I've heard. I've had all kinds of weirdos say stuff. Of me and Dave in bed, me showering, going to the toilet, my family going to the bathroom, including my grandkids. They sold them on kitty porn sites. They were to be nailed to that agent's desk for the confession of their violent crimes. And people mock me. And they get a real high out of making fun of rape victims that are being scammed by the drug cartel. See, that's where there is no way on earth that that agent didn't know that wasn't Al but Savannah's Facebook friend Alex in a beard where he walked by my room on 918-19 in the courthouse walking around in a beard and wig and in a robe like this like a penguin and I thought that looks like the guy that said he bashed my head in the one they call Alec or Alex got a dent like a bulping hair in the back of my head I said he left his comb on Dave's dresser after the attack there's a video of him trying to kill me he's the guy that followed him around me Savannah's Facebook friend. It's him in a beard. And with Judge Timothy Ludick, you know, I was laughing. They were framing that judge, trying to say he was letting his friend, retired Judge Pete, get away with crimes. The real retired Judge Pete's like 75, 80 years old. Don't have an 18 year old daughter, Michelle. It's Savannah pretending to be Michelle. Like they family church said, we out there seen her out there impersonating Michelle. She was telling everybody there she could ask the guys to drug, beat, and rape anybody, and they do it for her. It's breaking to all of them. Like she's a mafia bitch. Huh? She was seen with the Florida human traffickers there and in Minerva Grinders. And Dave was seen with Kingsman from Texas. The final Kingsman. The, the ones that are Iraqis. And caught under police surveillance. See, that agent opened a real case with statements. See, I guess deep down in me, I always want to think there's some good in people. Just something good. And I always thought that Agent John would show up and say, Karen, I'm not really dirty. I'm sorry I was mean to you on the phone. They hired so many people. They were all around you. And the only way I could think of is to actually get them is play along with them. And I was playing them. Uh, I usually don't make fun of human trafficking victims, rape victims. I don't make people gravel. I don't go along with crazy occult stuff. But they hired all those people and they were all over you and they've been harming you. And the only way to get in the cartel was to play along with them. I'm sorry you got hurt so bad. Of course you're going to get your money. And I'm not stupid enough to admit I talk to everybody and act like a crazy call person and I told on you and be that dirty. I'm not really this dirty. 
There's your money. I just had to make sure you're safe first. And I'm sorry you got hurt so bad. I honestly thought one day he'd show up and do the right thing. The one drug lord is banking that he'll never do the right thing. He bet everything on it. It's a bet. He bets. He banked. He's banking on everybody not doing the right thing. He bet everything of the control in this area. They're fighting over this area. Two drug lords. For this whole thing is a bet between two drug uh, two gentlemen. They're fighting over this area. Uh, it, their first bet is one could be so cruel it could push me to suicide. The other one could make me give up everything in life and have other people participate in it. Uh, they're fighting over this area and they're drug lords. The police taped in the first month of the case. Two guys that look like Joshy. My metal son. And they've been telling people repeatedly this is just a scam. That they're using her as a pawn. And that means scam. That means keep everybody preoccupied while they're serial killing other people and they're too stupid to turn them in. See, that's where two of the cops showed up. Look at all these people they hired to hurt her. I know. They're at, and they're like, come on. Look at all these people. They were all over me, the drug cartels. Where Kaylee said, well, you know about Savannah. I said, I know of her, but I don't know her. What do you mean you don't know her? Why would I? She's a little 18-year-old kid sitting with her parents. And she said, what do you mean you don't know her? I said, her parents went to that church a long time ago. They come visit. I know of her, but I don't know her. Um, and I've never had trouble with her parents before. Why would I know her? I didn't know she was dating Dave. Well, you know, her ex-boyfriend was big in drugs. What does that have to do with anything? He's a big drug dealer. Got the cartel to help out. They picked up the church's scam of fake sodium pentothal reports of date rape drug and me. Tell me say stuff with amnesia drugs so I'm sleepwalking, beat and rape me, the human traffic me. See, that's where I always thought that FBI agent John, I don't go along with human trafficking, I don't go along with raping people, I don't go along with drugs, kidnapping and sextortion and uh, warriors, I'm telling naked pictures of people without their permission. Definitely don't go along with kitty porn or little kids going potty. And I don't go along with people drugging people up and tell them to say something stupid and then photoshopping and washing and they think I'm stupid on a recorded line. And then people running scams on people. And he would know that it was medical malpractice and medication errors that made me sick before and they were all lying, ripping off my insurance. And that their scam was unbelievable. I always thought he would show up and do the right thing. And that one drug lord where they told me up in Ravenna, he's banking everything on. That means all world thing of betting everything on nobody doing the right thing. He thinks FBI agent John is so dirty, he'll never do the right thing. And he's going to lose control over this area to another drug lord. He's actually bet everything on it. And he's banking everything that nobody will do the right thing. No matter what, he watches, he waits until you do, slip up, you make a mistake, and then he's got you. He watches and he waits. And he bet that no one will do the right thing. And the only way to beat him is to always do the right thing, no matter what. And they went into this big, long detail. It's the only way to beat him. I'm going to pull this up.